Well, me and Katie are sitting in the car in a monsoon. We have something really exciting to show you, but of course it's raining. And it's really, and it's, it's really louder. raining. It's getting louder. You probably can't even hear us. We were hoping when this happened, it would be a beautiful sunny day and we could make a big deal out of it, but it's not. It's raining. Yeah, and it's about to come an electrical storm too. Well, it already has been kind of. We went to get groceries, so we've been on the way back from getting groceries and we could literally, the lightning was crazy and the thunder. So maybe you can begin to see headlights down there coming. That's Matt's truck. That's not what we were excited about. Yeah. It's what's behind Matt's truck. Another truck. Another a truck. Proportion. And I would turn my windshield wipers off, but then you wouldn't be able to see anything with the rain. I know you can't see very well anyway. But there's the big truck behind Matt's truck. Hauling an important piece of equipment. Yes, hauling a very important piece of equipment. In the way. Now you can see what it is. It's a tractor. Ta-da. Ta-da. Yeah. We're so excited to have a tractor. It's gonna be such a huge help when it comes to planting the corn down here in the big garden, but it's gonna be a huge help for all kinds of things from scraping our driveway to hauling dirt, digging out ditches, all kinds of things. I had all this planned in my mind. Beautiful sunny day with Matt driving up on it, but we'll have to wait for Matt to even try it out till tomorrow or maybe even after that till it dries out some. I do think it's gonna stop. It's not gonna rain tomorrow, I don't think, but then it will be soupy. Well, they must be enjoying the rain. They're just gonna talk about everything. <laughs> Matt's pointing and showing him and he's pointing and they're just having a big talk. Yeah, I don't think they might. It's okay though. I mean, that's good. And it's not cold either. So no, it's not too cold. It's not like the rain that's freezing you to death or anything. It's so. 56. That ain't terribly cold. That ain't bad at all.
great, don't it, Katie? Yeah. So exciting. I know the person that's most happy is Matt. You know, that's going to cut down on a lot of his work. Rain finally went away, and Matt's got to play with his new, new toy, new very useful toy. Yeah. What do you think so far? So far, I like it awful lot. He likes it. He's already worked on the driveway and done a few other things. <clears throat> he's he's really impressed so far. Mm -hmm. I can see lots less shoveling in my future, <laughs> and that's nice. That is going to be real nice. Yeah. I'm going to let Matt tell you a little <clears throat> bit about the about the tractor. So what this is is a it's a Kubota L2502, 25 horsepower. Uh, it is four-wheel drive with a with a front-end loader. Of course, that's not the mainest thing that I wanted. We've actually had a tractor for some years that was kind of inoperable, but even when it was, you know, you just couldn't do a whole lot with it. It didn't have a bucket, and it was so old that it was going to be hard to try to get one on it. But anyway... Uh, four-wheel drive I actually had a box scrape already uh, and I also had a boom pole for those of you who don't know what that is it's just a, a pole that goes on the back hooks to the three-point hitch where you can use a chain or a strap and lift and carry stuff with it and I've already used it and it's really really handy that's one of the most useful things that you can have for a tractor as far as I'm concerned uh, we did buy a tiller with it uh, so that we can till the bigger garden that we've acquired this year. We won't have to do it with a walk-behind tiller, so that'll be really good. And that was the only implement we bought with it was the actual tiller, and later on in the future we'll probably buy some more things. I don't know exactly what yet, but just having the loader and the tiller itself will be uh, really, really useful. And, of course, already having the box scrape. We've got a steep driveway. I don't know if you can see in the background, but... When it rains, it washes, and this will be really handy to keep it in pretty good shape. I did get a, a gear drive tractor. Uh, I don't think they're quite as popular as they used to be, but that's what I wanted as, as opposed to a hydrostat tractor, just simply because what I'm used to is, you know, gears and clutching and that sort of thing, and I think they have a little more power and they're a little more durable. In my estimation, I could be wrong about that, but that's just what I wanted. Um, they didn't actually have this on the lot. They had to get, they had a bunch of these, but they was all hydrostat. They had to get this from another, one of their other dealerships and have it brought to where we bought it from. And then they prepped it and took about a week or so, a little over a week. And they delivered it yesterday during the rainstorm, as y'all probably will see, but... Uh, so far what I've used it for, which has been very little, but it's, I mean, I can tell it's going to be very useful and we'll use it for a whole lot of different things and it will, or it should, uh, cut down on a whole lot of the manual work that I've always done as far as shoveling and moving mulch and moving uh, uh, mushroom compost and even firewood and that sort of thing. So looking forward to many years of use from it. This old box scrape I already had for my old tractor. Uh, I've had it, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. And it actually has rippers with it that go down in these slots. But right now I've got them off. I had them on it yesterday when I when I played with it a little. And I cut the driveway with the rippers and got it cut up pretty good. And then took them off and went back over it with the box and smoothed it out. And it only took, you know, in the past with the other tractors I had, it'd take me probably two or three hours maybe to get the driveway like I wanted it. I literally made three passes with the rippers and two passes without them. And the driveway is in better shape than it's been in years and years. So 
that worked quite well. And I think a whole lot of that's due to it being four wheel drive. Uh, my other tractors were only two wheel drive. So coming up the driveway, you couldn't, you couldn't pull a full box load of gravel or with it because it just wouldn't pull it. So I'd have to make a whole lot of trips to get, you know, some of the gravel that had washed to the bottom, you know, smaller loads of it pulled up and it just took so long yesterday. Uh, this box scrape was full of gravel and was spilling over the top. And like I say, in about 10 to 15 minutes, I had the driveway pretty well scraped like, like I want it. You know, and then you know, next few rains, it'll, it'll wash some more, but then I'll fix it again. And now we've got something we can keep it fixed with. So it's just a, just a uh, standard three-point hitch hookup. Here's the top link and the bottom links and they actually put a draw bar on it that's for you know you can put a ball on that and pull a trailer or whatever you want with it uh, it does have stabilizers for the bottom links which keeps it from laterally swaying very much uh, you know you want a little bit of play in it but not so much that it swings and and these things get into your into your tires you don't want that uh, so yeah, it's it's so far, I'm very, very pleased with it. So we also bought a tiller uh, with it. Uh, I took it off to put the box scrape on. I'm not ready to use the tiller in the big garden yet. It's still too wet. Uh, it's a 66 inch wide tiller, so it will actually, uh, it will till out the tire tracks on the tractor. It's a little bit wider than the rear tires, which I like. Uh, that way you're, when you make the last pass there's no tire tracks really in the in the garden and it doesn't it, it will till up what you're you're trying to keep from compacting the soil very much you know with the tires and this will till out your tire tracks as you go uh, i actually had one of these up until last year and sold it because i thought you know, we wasn't, wasn't going to use it anymore. And that was prior to knowing we were going to be using this big garden once again. So when we did decide to buy a tractor, the first implement I wanted was this tiller. And that way, you're not spending all day on Saturday going around that with a walk-behind tiller. And we, we did it for years in the past. Uh, but this, you know, I'll be able to till that garden in 15, 20 minutes now. So it'd be, and it does a much better job of, of getting the soil tilled up and mixed up like, we, like you want it. Then right here is the old boom pole that I've had. I've had this thing for years. From I think I had it the very first tractor I had, and it just hooks up on the three-point hitch. And then it has a, a hook on the bottom of the end of it and on the very end of it, and you can just back up things and chain them or strap them up to it and pick them up and, you know, things that are heavy. Um, I actually used it yesterday to pick up the box scrape behind the house. It was literally behind our old tractor that don't run. And I used this to pick it up and get it slid out from behind the tractor. And I brought it down and carried it down here with this and set it down to where I could back the new tractor up to it and hook it up. So they are very handy. It also has a quick detach bucket. Uh, lift these levers both of those levers and the bucket comes off and you can put other implements on it like a, a set of forks for uh, lifting pallets or logs or whatever uh, i think they make a now they now make a uh, a uh, front end uh, attachment for an auger where you can do fence po uh, post holes and that sort of thing and the advantage of that as opposed to having one on the rear is you've got down pressure on the front uh, It'll, it'll actually get started a whole lot easier on the front end than it does the back. The back's just uh, gravity. Sometimes it's hard to get the auger started with those. Uh, we didn't get any implements for the front, but we sometime in the future we probably will as we see what we need. And at some point I, I would like to have a backhoe attachment for this thing. That would be very handy. Uh, I think it would probably have to have the hydraulics and everything run to the back for that. Uh, it's some, that may be something we have to take it back and back to the dealership and have that done. Uh, but for now, what, what implements we have, we can do pretty much what we want to do, but tobacco would be very nice.
So up here on the dash, it does have a it does have a hand throttle. Uh, you can just set that, and it stays at a certain RPMs at all times. Uh, it also down here has a foot throttle that does the same thing, but it's a you can manipulate it with your foot if you need more more RPMs or whatever while you're doing whatever you're doing. You can give it a little more a little more fuel that way. Uh, of course, this is the uh, controls for the front end loader, the bucket, and the bucket arms and stuff. This is what runs all that. Uh, there's the parking brake. You want to always set that when you when you park it so it don't roll away. And as I said before, this is the uh, it's a gear drive, which is a manual manual shift. I'll show you. It does have a shuttle shift on the side of it. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, brakes and it actually does have I think I've not used them yeah it does it actually has individual brakes so you can brake one side the other side turns and it will actually help turn the tractor but I've got them hooked together now to where you just push both pedals and it, it breaks the tractor and stops it um, other side is the clutch um this yellow handle is PTO drive. Of course, this one is the three-point hitch up and down. And then this red handle over here is the four-wheel drive. You pull it straight up for to engage four-wheel drive and push it down to take it into two-wheel drive. PTO drive is just for, you know, for implements that you have on the back that require, you know, any kind of rotary to, um, like a bush hog or the tiller itself it just it just puts power from the tractor to that to that implement um, usually via drive shaft so it does actually does have headlights you could use this thing at night uh, it's got a i think it has a, um, a like a dim and a bright setting and actually a uh, uh, hazard lights if you had it on the highway which i'm going to try not to ever do so it has an RPM gauge, a heat gauge, and a fuel gauge on the instrument panel, and that's pretty simple, and that's the way I like things, simple. This is actually what's called a shuttle shifter. Uh, you can put it in in the whatever main gear you're gonna have it in, you know, slow, fast, whatever, whatever you're you're doing. And this this actually is forward and reverse for that gear. So whatever gear you want to put it in, if you want to you know, if you're plowing or tilling or something, you want it in a lower gear, you'd put it like in first gear. And then this is actually neutral forward and reverse. And it also has a, uh, a slow and a fast for that gear also. Uh, so you got quite a few options as far as, you know, if you want to go really, really super slow or a little faster or if you like on a highway or something, you could go, you could put it in high gear and put it in the fast mode with this one and i don't know how fast it would go but it would go i've not had it up that fast and not going to if i can help it but um, that way you can get where you're going a little quicker you know if you're not uh, not actually using an implement or something the rollover protection bar does have a uh, a pin that you can pull on both sides and then this top part will fold down and that gets you can, you can get into a lower space with it if you've got you know a lot of low hanging tree limbs or if you wanted to get it inside a lower building or something other a lower uh, lower ceiling type barn lint roses are really beautiful they're just in full bloom but i still hadn't managed to clean out the bed they're in so they're looking kind of raggedy just because of that but they're still really pretty this morning when I come out on the porch to put on my shoes that I wear outside, I seen something pink and I thought, wait a minute, ivies and laurels are not blooming yet. What is that? Well, I come for a closer inspection and you can see it's a little tree off the bank there. I don't know what it is, but I'm guessing it's a peach tree. The peach trees in the big garden that were my brothers, they're in full bloom. The blooms look just exactly the same. Um, and I would say that how it got planted there is we inadvertently planted it when we threw out some peach pits and it just come up on its own like a volunteer. 
Another thing you can see off the bank is daffodils. I've got them growing all the way out through there. It's where over the years their bulbs got through down probably when I was cleaning out. I usually try to climb down the bank and go ahead and cut those and take them in the house since you really can't see them from up in the yard. But they are beautiful even though they're growing in a kind of strange place. This is one of our beds on the bank. Last year I planted a lot of medicinal plants in this one. We didn't really use any of them, but I planted them. I can see the nettle. This is the first time I've ever been able to keep nettle going. So I have it. There's two bunches, stinging nettle coming up. Corey and Katie might have used some of that in their tea. And then beside it, that low growing stuff is self heal is the name of it. There's some curly dock that's edible. We could eat that. And then out there in the end is some valerian. It looks like it's doing really good. That little spot of green is feverfew. I don't think that's new growth. Somehow that's just held on from last year maybe, or maybe it is new growth, but I've never been able to grow it and keep it going either. Oh, and I see a lot of little bitty ones. Now that I look closer, I bet that's all feverfew. So that's really great. It's a pretty little flower and then it's supposed to be a natural pain reliever, but I've never used it for that. and see if I give you the right amount. I'm see if I got short -changed. I didn't short change you. <laughs> I did not. I wouldn't short change you. Yeah. Maybe someday it'll be warm enough for a popsicle. I could eat one now. You could eat one in the snow, which mm -hmm. we never got no snow, but too late for snow now, I think. No, it ain't too late. But <sighs> I don't want none now. No. My Careful. desire for sledding and snow is over till till next year, next winter. You agree? You could always go to a ski slope and you could take your little dinky sled and you could sled there. Take my plastic sled? Yeah. And see if they'd let me sled? From 1990. Yeah. Hey, you never know. When it does snow, I'll be prepared if they don't, like, crumple under me. It may just break uh, into You can it. literally see through the bottom of them. So <laughs> I don't believe I'd risk my life to get in it. Oh. Well, it don't look like I'm going to have to worry about it if we don't start getting more snow than we've had the last two years, two winters. So. Right. We hope you really enjoyed seeing Matt's tractor, uh, our tractor, but uh, Matt's the one definitely that'll be driving it. It's uh, So far, he's really pleased with it, and I'm pleased because he's pleased, and we're both excited thinking about all the stuff we could do with it, that especially saving labor of shoveling and tilling like Matt was explaining by using our little tillers that we've always used it would just be so much faster. We'll still use those up here but we don't have to do that big garden with them like we always did in the past and it would take a long time till that big garden with just a walk behind tiller especially one that was the only one we've got left now is the old uh, front time tiller that self-propelled and it's so slow I mean it just take forever mm -hmm. so you could read a book while you're tilling because it goes so slow it can't get away from you I went around that garden a lot of times with it back then but like I say it would take uh, at least a half a day you remember on Saturday yeah going in there and till it it would take about a half a day just to go to get it tilled in yeah and now I can do it in probably 15 minutes mm -hmm. or so. 15 minutes would be a lot better than all day. Yep. Yeah. So as far as where we got the tractor, I don't think we told that. We got it at Nelson Tractor. It's in. We went to Blairsville, Georgia, but I think they have locations in different places, don't they? Yeah, I think they've got one in, I don't know, Jasper maybe? Mm -hmm. Somewhere, maybe another one, I don't know. but. Uh, I think that tractor was actually at that other location because I wanted a a gear drive, and that's I don't I don't think they sell as many of those just because they're 
the hydrostats are a lot easier to run for most people. Most anybody can get on one and it's just a forward and a reverse and it's on a pedal. You know, you mash the pedal forward to go forward and, and back to go back. And, but I wanted a gear drive like the old ones because just to me they're stronger. And the, they were so nice to us. Really nice place oh, yeah. if you're if you're in the market to buy something like that. And the gentleman that helped us was named Zach Stone. So if you go over to Nelson for anything, you can tell him tell Zach that Tipper and Matt said hello. Oh yeah, he's a great guy. He really helped us. He was great to work with. And then wonderful person that delivered it, Donnie Burns. He was really great too. Yeah. And turns out his wife and him watch our videos, so that was really neat. Because then I was like, well, you'll get to see, you know, yeah. the tractor. So that was wonderful. He was a very, very nice man. So uh, we highly recommend them. Yep. And if you, but if you go, please tell them, tell them where you heard about them. Tell mm -hmm. them, tell them about us. And Matt was talking about the, in the, when he was talking and describing about his tractor there, how we'd had tractors in the past, Matt has. He'd always had used ones, really old ones that wasn't that <laughs> very used, very ones. used and yeah. old, and uh, only two. Did you only have two different ones or yeah, one? Two. Two, yeah. Um, and the last one that he had, it just multiple things wrong with it, and it just got to where it was just, you know, whatever. Too much time needed to be spent on it, and too much money that mm. we didn't have. But before we bought this one, of course, once we, Matt said, you know, we kind of let the tractor ideal of even having one go once we didn't have Pap's big garden anymore. That was when Matt used to till that big garden sometimes with his tractor and with the last one that you had, mm -hmm. I guess. Anyway, we just let that go and didn't think about it. But once Matt's now got more time and then we knew we were going to get the big garden back, Matt did try to think, well, let's revisit the old one and see if we can get it to run. And so Matt got it to run in that part. But then the, I'll let you explain about the wheels or whatever. Yeah, it had sat there. The reason it got parked was because the, the, the both front tires went flat and it sat there a while and then the rims were kind of rusty and then what caused the tires to go flat was the the holes where the valve stems go through had rusted out and it sat there it probably sat there five years six years and never cranked never moved and then the rear wheels were they weren't flat but the wheels were in the same shape it was actually worse they still had the tires were still inflated but the rims were in such bad shape so i thought if i can get that thing running make sure it'll run and all mechanically sound I'll start trying to find wheels and uh, stuff for it and then we'll get the tires and all that and then we'll use it still wouldn't have a bucket but at least we could put a tiller on it and till the garden so uh, we had first had went to Nelson's to see if they could find those those wheels and the tractor's so old they worked on it for days though <laughs> yeah, trying I to felt find bad them. about that yeah. But in the windup, we ended up buying one, so I didn't feel as bad. But anyway, they found part of what I needed, and I don't think it—I don't know if it was, you know, factory parts or if it was just aftermarket parts made to fit that. But they were so expensive, mm -hmm. so are. expensive, and they still couldn't find. They found what they found was for the rear wheels. They actually found the outer hoop for the rear wheels. It's a two-piece wheel. There's an inner hub and then the actual outer rim that, that actually adheres to the tire. They found that part and they were very expensive. And the guy called me and told me he'd found that and he said that uh, he, he didn't even price the tires for those wheels because he was pretty sure I wasn't going to go along with that price. But even at that point, I was still... You know, I was considering it because, you know, there it sets and we can't, you can't even move it. So I had him to price, go ahead and price the tires and he was still looking for the front wheels. And I think it was that night I began to think about that and roll that over in my head. You know, spend all that money on this thing and it, and we're still only going to be able to till with it. And possibly I could use the, you know, scrape the driveway, but, it, but not very good because it's only a two wheel drive tractor. So I got to thinking about, you know, we should just go back and and at least look at the newer ones and price them and see if it's something that we can do, see if it's doable. You know, I didn't have any idea what they cost or anything. And we went and talked to Zach, 
and he walked us around the yard and they had all kinds of tractors and he explained it all real well to us and we decided that's just what we're going to do and that way we've got the implements that we need to do what we need to do and don't have to worry about trying to keep the old junker running and trying to find parts for it so we just we just ended up just buying a new one and then from you know as long as we take care of it it should last the rest of my life or my working life anyway mm -hmm. at this age yeah so I, we felt like that was just the best option for us and i believe it was yeah best investment mm -hmm. Uh, one thing we could better afford it now than like right. thinking about even we couldn't even afford to fix mats used to it was always <laughs> yeah. a problem so there was that yeah. and then also thinking about all the things we want to do and then as Matt said we're getting older Matt's getting older I'm getting older you, I'm on, I'm not getting older just you <laughs> okay as long as that makes you feel good uh, anyway but the shoveling and the you know especially tilling that big garden we used to all take turns. Daddy had more than one tiller, and we'd all be. I've tilled in it. Matt's tilled it a lot. The girls. Daddy tilled in it. The girls. Paul tilled it a lot. Um, yeah. So we've all tilled in it, and it takes a takes a while, but it's doable if you're determined and you want to grow stuff. That's what we always did. And Daddy never could afford to have a tractor right. and didn't have nowhere to put it and all those kind of things. We still problems. we'll still probably run the, the small tiller in it. You know, in between the rows once stuff gets up, but. But to get it prepared and get it ready to plant, we can get it done much better, yeah. and it, it, that, that tractor tiller will mix the soil so much better, and we'll be able to get to the point to start planting much easier, much faster. Now. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's so many other uses, like our driveway is always a battle. Yeah, and the mulch. Been and a the, battle for 28 years. Yeah, the, the driveway, and we can keep up this other driveway and Granny's driveway. Yeah. And. Uh, wood as far as getting wood moved to the house yeah it'll just be so much easier uh, won't have to handle it two or three times we can just do it once or twice now as, as opposed to especially uh, doing the buckets for the mulch yeah right, no, you know and i'll still do some yeah, shampoo, oh, have to, yeah there'll be some it just won't be as much and i want to do some of it just to stay active and stay but i don't want to do that much mm -hmm. <laughs> So we're excited about all the possibilities, of course. Mm -hmm. And Matt's, he's glad the rain went away so he could he could play on it. They were supposed to bring it the day before, and something they didn't get to, but Matt had already planned. He was just going to get on it and start doing all kinds of stuff. And then, of course, when they did bring it, it's a torrential rainstorm, yeah. but, uh, which really washed our driveway. But then Matt was able to, after it dried out, he was able to work on it some and get it back in shape. So mm -hmm. that was great. Yeah. Really good. And from now on, every time we have a rainstorm, as soon as it's over, I'll get out there and fix it. Mm -hmm. We've always had a uh, sort of or a kind of a running battle with uh, uh, people bringing packages up here. Sometimes they don't want to. We actually got a letter one time said that they would no longer deliver packages to our house due to our driveway, which kind of made me mad, but it kind of made me laugh at the same time because. <laughs> because we live somewhere where it's uh, that, the, in that kind of shape but I'm kind of glad we do because it's you know it's kind of remote and kind of yeah. hard to get to and I, that's what we want but they and that's fine if they don't want to deliver them up here I don't care I'd made them the bottom of the hill yeah. but what they'll do is turn around and leave with them you know yeah. and that kind of irritates me. They didn't actually do that though they kept delivering I think that was one person that didn't like it. Yeah but, but yeah. now you know it, yeah you It'll still be it. steep, but yeah. at least it won't be as rough. Right. Over the years that we've lived here, there's been times that it was that we could afford to have somebody work on it, and it was in great shape. And especially over the probably the last five years, we've kept it in better shape. Right. Um, had money to help to get somebody else to do it, or Paul would rent a little machine to do something at his house, and Matt would borrow it and and get it in good shape. And uh, then Matt has the four wheeler that has the little blade on it, and that helped a lot. It was hard, but it helped a lot. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but uh, in years past, there was two or three winters where it did get, and it was uh, one of those winters where it was really cold, but the thought, like this year, we didn't have the mud. We've not had that, yeah. or last year. But there's one or two winters where the mud, that's 
thawing and freezing and thawing. Yeah, it would just continually freeze and then continue to thaw. Just got, thaw. It just like going four-wheeling every yeah. time you come in and out. And yeah. I'd be driving out in the morning in the forerunner and going to work and take Corey and Katie to school and they'd start screaming that I was going to kill them. Because you just start sliding, you just slide. Uh, and then till the wheels pick back up, but that was uh, in those days. I did say that it was like we lived in Batman's lair because nobody <laughs> could get up it unless you had four wheel drive. Right. But those, it's not like that every winter. It's not been like that in a long time now. But right. there was there's a couple of times where it got really bad, mm. and you just had to had to hit it at a hard go and mm. know how to go get off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and even doing it every day, of course, gives you those skills learning. What's really scary yeah. is to go off of it in the snow. Mm. And I have done it, and I used to do it, but I don't. If it's going to snow, I'll park something at we the bottom We try to of the park hill. at the bottom uh, if you know that it's going to. But lots of times when it actually does snow here, it's when they say it's not going to. Right. Which we should be better prepared ourselves for that. But uh, a lot of times you take something to the bottom because <laughs> they say it's going to snow and then it don't snow. And you just right. got to walk down there in the cold and crank mm. your car. Right. Anyway. Um, thinking, go back to the, I was thinking about how Matt was, because Zach that sold us the tractor, he was surprised kind of that Matt wanted the, you, what the, gear, you, drive. the gear drive, because not many people uh, ask for that anymore. And it is because just the ease of driving, those other ones are easier to drive. But it made me think of how uh, not as many people today drive manual transmissions, which the tractor is different than a manual transmission, but sort of in the same it's vein. It's kind of the same. same kind yeah. of the same. I mean, you still gotta you still gotta use a clutch to get took off and all yeah. that, and lots of people they've never done it. Wow. You know, and then a lot of most of the car manufacturers don't even make manual uh, transmission cars anymore. I think even 18 wheelers don't do it no yeah. more. They're and I've even. always preferred those just because, I mean, I've always known how I grew up. That's the very first thing I learned how to, to drive is that. And I was, it's like riding a bicycle. Once you do it and you get it, and you can drive about anything. And I've just always preferred them. It's just you can't hardly get them anymore. You know, it's hard to find. That was the like a Jeep that you learned how to drive on, I guess? It was a 61 wheelless Jeep truck. Uh, four-wheel drive Jeep and it was uh, three-speed in the floor uh, manual everything there's no power steering no power brakes none of that and it was four-wheel drive but it had a high low range and it was two different sticks one stick was high range one stick was low range and by the time I was 10 years old I could drive that thing I could do anything I wanted to do with it and so I've always always known how to do it and known how to drive anything like that so I just prefer them and I think they I think they're more I think anything with a manual transmission is more durable it's just you got to know how to use mm -hmm. it you know and not that people can't learn it now it's just they don't have the opportunity yeah, to learn it because they don't make cars, it anymore. Right. yeah so I didn't learn how to drive a manual transmission I learned on automatics what granny and pap always had well pap's work trucks were not that but I wasn't driving them but their cars they always had were automatics because granny couldn't drive a manual but when I was in high school my one of my best friends she had a manual car and we both worked at McDonald's and I wanted to learn how to drive one and sometimes our shifts would not be exactly the same so maybe I would get off two hours before she did but I, we rode to work together because you know when you're best friends you want to do everything together and so I would I, I literally taught myself she she told me how to you know she'd showed me once or twice but while she was inside still working, I literally taught myself to drive a straight shift by just driving around McDonald's, around the parking lot and around the building, mm -hmm. and just parking and doing whatever. So that's how I learned how to. And then one of my very first cars, then since I knew how to, then Pap said, okay, well, the manual transmissions are usually cheaper, so we get you first car tipper, it'll be, a, you know, we'll do that. And it was a little Chevette, a little red Chevette, which I wrecked, but anyway different story but I drove it um, and then I had a car that was automatic I think the next one and I hated that car it was like it was an old car but it was a Buick Skylark I think and it was just a lemon I just it just drove me crazy and then I but from then on all the cars I had were manual transmissions because then I was more like well I could actually help pay for my next car daddy you know instead of him trying to find me one and uh, paying for it so 
the I had like a little Ford EXP that was a was that a five speed? That was mm -hmm. by the time I met Matt. Mm -hmm. And then I traded it in on a, a little Ford Escort, which was also a straight shift. I mm -hmm. guess that was five speed too. So that's what I preferred to drive. By that point, that's just what I would rather drive. Mm -hmm. And then after me and Matt was married, we still had my little Ford Escort. Of course, we had Matt's truck. It was a straight, what was it, um, <clears throat> four-speed, five-speed, what is what did yeah, you And for the record, for, that's the one you tried yeah, to sell. Yeah, that's the one I tried to sell. What was it? It was a 83 Custom Deluxe Chevrolet truck. But, I mean, like a four-speed? Yeah, it's four-speed. Four speed. So mm -hmm. I could drive it, too. Anyway, um, that's just what I preferred to drive. Even at Lake Logan, when I worked out there, when I met Matt, I don't remember the, I can't even remember the brand of the truck, if it was a Chevrolet or what. Do you remember that white truck or if it was a Ford? It but was it was a three on the column, so right. it was on the column, but it's still straight shift. I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, I have a funny story about that truck, but I'll tell it a different time. Anyway, and then after... The Escort just got so wore out after me and Matt was married. That's the car we brought Corey and Katie home from the hospital in and everything. Then um, we was actually going to buy a new car. It's going. I guess the Escort was kind of, was it almost new when I bought it though? Seems it was, like, it was, was it new? Yeah, you bought it. Yeah. We, we weren't, you we bought it off on yeah. your own. We yeah. weren't married or anything. That was when Callaway Ford was still in Murphy. That's where I bought it. That's actually where the EXP come from too. A long time ago. A long time ago. It's not there anymore. Anyway, um, then me and Matt decided I was going. We were going to get me a new car. I was so excited, and we got a Honda Civic, brand new. I loved that car. I just loved it. It, it was, was a, a it was car. a five speed, and I just adored it. And but it was when those driveways would get like I was talking about. I, I didn't want to bring it up the driveway. I was making payments on it, you know, so I'd have park at Granny's and walk. Her driveway's not as bad as ours. So um, then we had a. What a terrible hailstorm! Yeah, a bad one. And the hailstorm—it would have—it wouldn't have mattered if I'd been up here. Was I? Now that I'm thinking about it, was I? Me and Daddy was on the way to church, wasn't we? Yes. What happened? So it wouldn't have mattered if I'd been up here. Well, would it have been? Would I've been parked in the basement? Yes, yes I would have been. I used to park in and the I basement. And I told you don't go. And Matt tried to tell me not to go, and I said I was going to go anyway. So I was going to church. That that night, and I went by to pick up Daddy, and we got he got in the car, and we started down his driveway. About the time it started hailing, it was you couldn't even hear yourself. The hail was so loud, and there's some, kind of some trees that overhang. So he's like, "Tipper, get up there and try to try to get under the trees." And I did that, but anyway, it damaged the car. Oh, it beat that car to death. And uh, <laughs> didn't it? Yeah, and the insurance paid for it and all that. But then after that, Matt was like, "We just gotta we need to get rid of that car and get something that'll come up the driveway." and that's more uh, you know he was always worried about me being in a wreck with Corey and Katie because it was a little car that we'd be you know we'd have a better chance at survival if it was like a bigger more substantial uh, so he convinced me to go look at cars and then that day we bought the forerunner and I was so mad because I didn't want to trade my Honda I was just so mad at mad I wouldn't hardly speak to him on the way home uh, but I later come to realize Matt was exactly right. He should, we should have, that's exactly what we should have done. And the Forerunner was fantastic for kids. It was sturdy and it come, it, during all the mud bogging, it come right up the driveway, never failed me. It was the best, it's just the best car I've ever had. And we still had. got it. And, and we we've still had got it. it. 21 yeah. years, I think. Yeah, so Matt was exactly right. But one of the things that I, I was mad about that I, I did kind of like it, and it was not brand new. It was used, but somebody, whoever had had it, had not drove it very much, and it had been like garage cap. It was in perfect condition. It was like a brand new one. Uh, but one of the things I didn't like about it right off, other than I was, you know, so sad about my Honda Civic, was that it was um, oh, it was an automatic. It wasn't a straight shift. So I was like, I don't want an automatic, Matt. I don't want an automatic. Uh, but that's what I ended up with, and then I loved it. He Matt, absolutely made the right decision on that. But uh, but that was it's funny that I really was despondent over not having a straight shift. Mm -hmm. And then after that, Matt bought a uh, long time after that had a, a Toyota truck that was a straight drive. Mm -hmm. So then we had another. Well, actually, you had the little blue one was a straight drive too, wasn't it? He was. Yeah. So we had one back in our lives. So if I drove those trucks, I still got to drive a straight shift. Uh, but today we just have automatics. Yeah. 
it is like Matt said though once you learn it's like the swimming I think you don't like I don't doubt that I could just get in a, a straight drive and take off and I'm, I'm not sure I could drive the tractor I'm not saying that but uh, um, I could get in a car or truck or whatever and just take off if it was a straight shift I wouldn't even have to think about it because I mm. drove one for so long in fact you are going to drive the tractor oh you're going to get me to drive it you're going to drive the tractor and that's going to be another video oh gosh I don't know about that we'll get it off the hill and get it down there on the flat ground and, uh, and let me try to drive oh, it yeah. it reminds me of one time um, I don't even, can't remember if if we were married or not, if we were, then you probably remember this. But we were all down at Pap's big garden working. We was all down there working, and he had he at that time he was driving a old truck like a what do you call that? Just a little a little like just a little bobtail tanker truck. Yeah, and uh, he had and when he come home from work, instead of pulling it up to Granny's, he just pulled it all the way out to Stephen Kim since he was going straight to the garden, and turned it around and everything and. Um, Anyway, then we was all through, and he was going to get it and take it back home so that when he left for work the next morning, you know, it'd be there. And he said, Tipper, go out there and get in that truck and pull it out here. Pull it just to the mm -hmm. end of the garden. I said, I can't drive that truck. He said, oh, you can too. Go out there. Go out there and get in it and drive it. So he told me, like, because it did, is it one of those that had the weird gear thing with the button on the side? I don't remember. I can't remember that part either, but he told me what to, I must I don't have think asked it him. Was, but I mean, it yeah. was a stick shift yeah. and probably had multi, it was probably a two speed. Yeah. Two maybe, speed transmission. Maybe. But he told me what to, just what gears to put it in and say, go out there and get it and drive it out here. So I did. I drove it just to the, I just mm -hmm. drove it down their driveway and around to the edge of the garden and stopped so that he could get in. He's proud of yourself. Oh, I was so proud. Yeah. He was proud <laughs> of me too, but I was so proud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was so proud I drove that big truck. Uh, anyway, I'm sure he wasn't supposed to let me do that, but, uh, of course, he's not here to get in trouble, and Kilgore's has been gone a long time, long, long time. I think I drove that truck one time, too. Yeah. I mean, same thing, just here. We didn't get on the highway or nothing, but I think I moved it, or, in fact, I know I did. I like to ride in it. Sometimes mm -hmm. I would, those trucks like that that he drove, I'd ride in them if he was dropping me off at school or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I like to drive a straight shift. I and, do, too. But I don't... I don't worry about it as much today. Of course, I bought this. I picked out the car that I drive now, and it's not. It's like Matt said. You can't find a, a straight shift hardly now, so it's an automatic. <clears throat> My truck, and it's a good truck, you know, nice. But I want to take a hammer to that thing most times I get in it, just because there's so many buttons and electronics, electronics. and buttons, and it don't. It has like a. It's an automatic transmission, but it has. Uh, even even the the shifting of the gears in the transmission has got sensors and stuff and my goodness that's just ain't, it ain't supposed to be that way and in my mind you know I just don't like that mm -hmm. uh, every single time I turn off the highway onto our road it goes downhill and that thing never shifts like it should so you turn off the highway and as it starts downhill, it's got some kind of sensor that tells it it should be in a lower gear. So it gets in a low gear, so when you turn off the highway and you pick the gas back up, it's in that super low gear, and the RPMs go way high. And there ain't no sense in that. Mm -hmm. Mine does some funny stuff like that, depending on if I'm going up or down. <clears throat> and if I could way. figure out how to get in there with a hatchet and chop all that out, <laughs> uh -huh. I would. I know, but you can't. It's too intertwined. And the car that I have now is all-wheel drive, so it comes up the comes up the driveway very, very easily. And the Forerunner was four-wheel drive, so it come up very easily. Uh, but it is a difference for the Forerunner. You have to put it in four-wheel drive, and then like mine, I just push a button. So, which is nice, I guess. But but I'm like Matt, it, and thinking that the other is better. And even the Forerunner is not a straight shift at all. But even that just driving the forerunner even today it's 20 years old I, it feels so sturdy and like i'm just in control of the you know i don't know it's different and mine's like what would pap say scooting along in a paper pasteboard box that's what he used to say <laughs> it's like tipper your little car is like scooting along on a in a pasteboard box that's about, right. that's about what it feels like but the forerunner when i get in it i'm like oh yeah that's what i remember sturdy feel strong in the road right yeah <clears throat> I don't guess we'll ever, ain't never going to go back that way as far as getting what I would 
what I would consider a decent. I mean, I'm a truck guy. I've always had trucks, and that's all I'm going to ever have. But to get one, what I would call, you know, a, would be satisfied with, you'd have to go back 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to happen, I don't guess. So I no. just have to grumble. Yeah. But we ain't grumbling about the tractor. I'm no. happy about it. No. And, and there's probably some electronics on it. I mean, ain't much, but they might be some that I don't know about, and it may rear its head in the future, but. As long as the driveway is kept up and the garden's tilled and the plants is growing, mm -hmm. I'll keep my mouth shut. We're excited about everything growing. Yeah. And it's felt really like spring of the year for sure here. I guess it almost is now technically, but it's felt like it for a couple of weeks. But then we see the weather's going to bring us another bout of cold weather. Yeah, it's going to be cold. It's going to be hard freezes next week. So those peach trees that are bloomed out down at Steve's will, I guess may get bit even though we're probably going to remove all of them anyway mm -hmm. but anything else I don't know what else has been bloomed out but um, it may may not make it through the I think it's going to be two nights of down in the 20s hey, yeah, low 20s so it's going to be a hard freeze yep. but we knew it wasn't wasn't truly over yet it don't make in this part of the country I don't know about everywhere else but there is no question in this part of the country in early to mid-March if stuff blooms, it will always, without fail, it will always get bit and then that'll be it. Yeah, and that happens a lot. It happens a lot. But, you know, you see you see people planting early when, the, and it's, it's hard not oh, it's to. Oh, it's tempting, yeah. When it gets pretty and, you know, you've been yeah. cooped up all winter. But it will always, it will freeze. It will freeze all next month. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, you can frost the first couple of weeks of May yeah. here, and it, it does on yeah. occasion. But and sometimes the late one gets stuff. Right. Was that but, a couple of years ago? It had a big frost on like May tenth. Yeah. A big hard freeze. So and then that sometimes. was the last one, and then it turned off blistering hot yeah. after that and stayed. But that was a couple of years ago. We always try to wait and plant our stuff to where when it actually comes up is past that date. Mm -hmm. I've shared before, but uh, Randy that reads our blog, reads my blog, he shared that his father-in-law loved and he'd get anxious like that wanting to garden. So he just planted, I think it may not have been his father-in-law, somebody in his family or some one of his good friends. Anyway, that he planted what he called a frost garden because he just knew the frost would probably get it, mm -hmm. but, but he couldn't, he help, couldn't it. help it. Yeah. He just wanted, and sometimes it didn't get it. So then he had early, you mm -hmm. know, early vegetables. Yep. So. I understand it, getting stuff and wanting to get stuff in the ground. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, I'm anxious, especially about the corn. And now we've got the, the missing piece of the tractor, so it'll make it so much easier. Mm -hmm. So much easier to get there. Well, we hope you enjoyed uh, hearing about the new excitement going on around our place. And hope you enjoyed spending time with us today. We're always glad when you stop by to help us celebrate Appalachia.